you've got to go with uh, John Jones. Uh, you have to go with Ronda Rousey. Women would not be fighting in the UFC if it wasn't for her. You would have to put GSP in there and uh, absolutely positively Conor McGregor. He, he, he elevated and changed the game globally. Dana White recently presented his UFC Mount Rushmore to the public, and of course he drew the displeasure of the MMA community. Same as with the recent P4P debate, fans immediately rushed to express their opinion. Everyone seemed to have their own criteria, but Dana's obviously has nothing to do with fighting abilities. The list is weird, but not shocking. It, it, was, it was weird, but not shocking. However, the fact that he did not mention one of his greatest fighters is crazy. Dana never knew how to hide his displeasure towards certain fighters, but this is just another one of the injustices he put that man through. Even John Jones remembered to mention him on his Mount Rushmore. Do you know who that fighter is? Well, if you stay until the end, you will find out. But we will tell you that a few weeks ago, he made the MMA world cry with the latest news about his career. So grab your hiking gear, hit the subscribe button if you're new to the channel, and get ready to climb, because Mount Rushmore awaits. Three of the four listed fighters are the highest paid MMA athletes of all time, which shows that the president chose those who brought him the most money. Again, not shocking. However, what about the other sports giants he didn't even mention? Dana talked about taking the sport to a new level, so where is Royce Gracie? The man participated in the UFC tournament and defeated three opponents in one night with his submission skills. In addition, he did the same thing in the next tournament, making history. This was at a time when people thought that BJJ and Karate were the same sport. Hoyce Gracie did something spectacular. Oh, he introduced yeah. the idea that a smaller man could beat a bigger man in a real-life fight hmm. and with techniques that you've never seen before. If anyone deserves to be mentioned in the evolution of the sport of MMA, it is Royce. The man participated in the longest fight in UFC history, which lasted 36 minutes. You heard that right. One round, no rest. We're talking about a man with the longest finish streak in UFC history, counting 11 submissions inside the first round. Conor McGregor took this whole sport to another level when he became not only the biggest star in, in, in the sport, but one of the biggest star in all of sports. Royce brought something new to the sport, although it wasn't in the style of McGregor. The question is whether the UFC would have had the same growth without the legendary Gracie. Regardless, Dana opted for a notorious on this one. Still, 39 million earnings are no joke. Is he fucking awesome? GSP definitely has a justified place on Dana's list and everyone else's. The man earned about 11 million and was a top fighter and former welterweight champion. But believe it or not, Dana forgot to mention one man who made his wallet thicker. You must have been surprised when you didn't hear Anderson Silva in his selection. We won't dwell on him for long because we talked about Anderson's achievements in the last video about incredible UFC records. So make sure to check it out. Silva is just another name that people have been wondering about. He earned 13 million in the UFC in six years of reign. And in addition, he brought many eyes to the screens and many faces to the audience. For a very long time, he was considered one of the greatest MMA fighters by everybody, Dana White included. I, I think that, that Anderson Silva is, I think he's the greatest mixed martial arts ever. I agree. However, the spider remains unmentioned by his boss in 2024. Okay, maybe Silva's downfall tarnished his image a bit, but what about Khabib Nurmagomedov? It was obvious that Bones would be on the president's list, regardless of everything he has thrown at us. Jones belongs on Mount Rushmore. But when he already mentioned John Jones as an undefeated fighter, he could have added another healthier example, such as the Eagle, who is in second place among the highest paid MMA athletes. I, wow. Wow, man. He is the baddest on the planet. Undefeated, dominant, and humble guy whose career has not been stained by controversies, the man brought nothing but high morals and an indomitable warrior spirit to the UFC cage. But it seems these qualities are not something that counts. We must not forget that Khabib is Dana's unforsaken love and his most difficult retirement to this day, which is probably one of the reasons he didn't include him. White loves it when his fighters retire on time, but absolutely hates it when they do it prematurely, especially when he can squeeze more money out of them toughest retirement for me because usually when it's time for them to retire i'm happy for them to retire it's it's over you've accomplished everything that you could possibly accomplish why keep doing this um habib was a tough retirement yeah we don't know that any mma person has a single female fighter on their mount rushmore but dana still chose ronda rousey he says that without her women would not fight in the ufc 
Although our opinion is that the UFC would be in the same place today without the women's divisions, let's be real, how many of you are excited to see a women's fight on the main card? Kudos to Ronda for her success. Truth be told, not many male fighters have achieved it. But the Ronda case is reminiscent of McGregor. They brought the company a lot of money with their rapid and dominant rise, and then they sank so deep into defeat that they couldn't dig themselves out. At the end of their careers, both are blaming everyone and everything but themselves. But okay, if a female fighter has to be in today's debate, why not choose Amanda Nunes? Five years ago, she was the greatest female fighter ever, according to White, not Ronda Rousey. Amanda Nunes, the greatest female fighter you've ever yes. seen in your life. Yes, she's the best. I mean, we said it going into that fight. The one that came out with both the, you know, the 45, 35 pound belt would be the best ever. She said uh, she was actually the greatest fighter of all time. Would you agree with that statement? Well, listen, anybody who wins two belts, the whole champ champ thing is real, you know? Um, you know, she won two belts. Cyborg, the most feared fighter out there. Um, and she went in and made it look easy. Let's remember that the lioness from Brazil devastated Rowdy in 40 seconds. She ruined Ronda's plan for her return and sent her straight to WWE. Everything Rousey did, Amanda did better. Women's champions change often and Nunes has remained on top for a long time, beating Ronda's records. Unlike her predecessor, the Brazilian showed that she could come back from defeat and regain the title. In addition to that, she became a double champion and earned her place in front of Rousey. Just look at the names on the resumes of both and tell us what you think. Speaking of champ champ status and the importance that Dana gives it, we haven't heard names like Henry Cejudo or at least Daniel Cormier anywhere. True, both are debatable in today's topic, but not completely excluded, depending on the criteria and opinion of the majority. Before we finally reveal the fighter whose head is a must on Mount Rushmore, when we talk about pure fighting and achievements, let's remember Dana's selection four years ago. If you're talking about a Mount Rushmore, you know, where their heads are carved in stone forever, yes. um, you, you have to go hoist Gracie. Amanda Nunes has to be Amanda Nunes, the greatest female fighter ever. The other two are tough. I would have to go with a John Jones. The guy's never been beat. And then number four, on the Mount Rushmore. I guess she'd have to go with Chuck Liddell. Dana White wasn't always thrilled with him. Regardless of his legendary career, the president managed to get rid of him and replace him with a fighter he didn't even like. The reason for this is that this fighter knew his worth and did not want to sell himself as a fake trash talker to promote fights. Can you imagine being one of the greatest fighters of all time and the boss of your fight promotion being unhappy with you? It's Demetrius Mighty Mouse Johnson, a small man with big success in his MMA career and an even bigger heart. Dana White's main man, John Jones, couldn't help but include him in his selection. Mount Rushmore, you get to pick four biggest MMA legends. You can include yourself. Who's on your Mount Rushmore? All right, uh, myself, Anderson Silva. Uh, Fedor Emelianenko, Demetrius Johnson. Uh, Demetrius Johnson, man, he is a tremendous athlete. He's a tremendous athlete. Here, I don't mind sharing that debate with a guy like Demetrius Johnson. Say what you want about Jones, but the man knows fighting and knows how to recognize the best fighters. DJ is a whole package. Top IQ, a perfect all-around MMA fighter. No PEDs, no weight cut issues, 11 title defenses, championship in one championship, a legendary comeback after every defeat, a beautiful personality in and out of the cage, a perfect role model, and a true MMA ambassador. All the qualities you look for in a fighter and a human being, Demetrius got it. But still. I'm not thrilled with Demetrius Johnson. He has the lowest selling pay-per-view in the history of the UFC. <laughs> Demetrius Johnson publicly said goodbye to MMA sport at the beginning of September. And if you are a true fan, you must have shed a tear because Mighty Mouse sure did. First off, uh, I want to say thank you so much to the fans. You guys have always been amazing to me to live out my dreams and show my passion through martial arts. Uh, I want to say thank you to all of my teammates from the very beginning back in 2006. I'll be 2024. It's been a long journey. Uh, thank you, you guys. You guys have made me a better person, a better athlete. Thank you to my wife for always encouraging me to pursue my passion, my dreams. The conclusion is that Dana White turned his Mount Rushmore into a club of millionaires and not one of the greatest UFC fighters. We could kind of understand everything, except for the fact that 
he didn't put in the dominant flyweight champion. But hey, everyone is entitled to their own opinion. So are you. So take it upon yourself to write in the comments which heads are your choice and why. Don't forget to turn on the notification bell so you don't miss new videos and hit like if you like today's video.